Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Quantum Energy right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest today is Sarah Main. You've got two Sarahs here today. Double, <laughs> double the joy. Um, we're going to be talking about her new book, The Conscious Confidence, um, using the wisdom of the Sanskrit to find clarity and success. You know, I know we're in a, a new age and a new awakening, a new discovering, but what we are discovering of ancient, ancient things that have been there always to guide us. And somewhere along the line, we turned our backs against this wonderful wisdom and decided to do it our way. And in a lot of ways we've screwed up folks and it really is not the way that we need to be. So we need to turn up our attention back to these wonderful old Sanskrits and ancient wisdom and really find and bring out the consciousness within ourselves that will save us and our, our planet. She has um, a practical confidence booster program derived from the deepest meanings of the Sanskrit concepts to help you establish a safe, secure reference point from which to see the world and make clear decisions on how to act. Uh, clear decisions on how to act. I think we need that, don't you? Um, <laughs> she's a scholar uh, and a transformal transformational executive coach. And uh, we're very lucky to have you here. And let's just Keep peeling back those onions and see what more we can gather from you. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Thank you so much, Sarah. It's lovely to be here. <laughs> and just to make kudos now, I'm in uh, BC, Canada, which is one o'clock for me, and it's six o'clock in her morning. So, you know, been up this early and bright and breezy. So, thank you. Ancient wisdom. It's been around there since the beginning of time to guide man, but man just got, I don't know uppity at some point saying I don't need your wisdom I've got my own <laughs> and consequently war after war after war through every era um, what have we learned I'm not too sure we've learned anything so these ancient transcripts uh, and and ways of doing things are just desperately needed right now aren't they I well yes turning to the timeless wisdom I like to think of it as timeless mm. wisdom rather than ancient yeah um this wisdom has been is available in the universe to everyone at all times it's there as a thread and we just have to know we have to be taught that it's there mm -hmm. and shown how to connect to it but once we're connected to it it's an act of memory because it's within us mm -hmm. but the thread is there to remind us of what's within ourselves and that's what i was taught um, and the thing is, this wisdom is transformational and does connect us back to who we really are. And that's the point of the wisdom. Mm. And then from that point, it, things are clear and there's clear choices that can be made and things work out. They just do. The thing is, we're very hyped up on knowledge, aren't we? Yeah. You know, the more knowledge you have, the more initials behind your name you have, the more important you are. And some of that knowledge is absolutely relevant desperately needed if you're a neurosurgeon i do want you to have that knowledge <laughs> before you go into the brain but where is the wisdom in that knowledge because it's knowledge it's data until we know how to tap into the wisdom listen to the heart and soul and understand what that knowledge means to us and how to apply it yeah. we are just kind of a knowledge bank we're our own computers so the wisdom yeah. is the knowingness on how to use the knowledge yes and it and it the wisdom actually connects all the elements of ourselves so mm -hmm. that we're we're whole and we uh remain whole we know we're whole and we, we move in that in that wholeness rather than just being stuck basically in our heads with mm. information essentially um and we're just a body 
you know, bones and flesh and so on with, with processes that are occurring automatically and autonomically. And yeah. then, um, and, and then, Sorry, a bit choppy today, folks. High winds. She'll be back with us. Hold on. I hope. <laughs> the joys of the internet. Okay. Sorry, folks, we had a wonderful internet drop, which, uh, you know, I'm afraid nobody has control over the internet's wavelengths and uh, uh, she took, her to, took her away from us. So you were in the mid-sentence there. Can you gather that thread again for us about the wisdom? <laughs> Sarah? Um, yes. Well, you've gone again, Sarah. Okay. You're frozen. I'm Sorry about that, folks. We had an internet eruption here where we both lost ourselves. And so we are back and hopefully now without any internet uh, interruptions. But you were deep in the wisdom of how to use it, not just our heads. Yes. The thing is, connecting with wisdom, you can tell straight away because immediately we're integrated and there's a wholeness and a fullness. It's not just up in our heads and seeing everything at the physical level. We see things at, um, in a much deeper level and our awareness is greater. It's increased. It's higher. And it is all about this higher awareness. Um, and that sounds a bit spooky to people, but it's utterly practical. And that's, uh, and that's what I was taught. And, and it really works. And I used it through my teaching career. Um, you know, it's just the only way to live. Um, for me, I don't trust the head knowledge without going through the soul, heart and spirit first. If the soul, heart and spirit is in concurrence with it, uh, or, the, you know, the, I'm feeling the knowledge, then I know it's right. But if I can't yeah. feel it, then it's just knowledge and I find myself, yes, yes, but, yes, but. And always we need to sit on our butts. But if we're not igniting our heart and soul and spirit into it where the wisdom is, we're not going to understand which knowledge to extract to apply to the situation. So it's yes. really imperative we get out of just our heads and to understand what this is up here. And that the heart is where we're wanting to speak. The soul, that has so much intellect in it. Yes, but I, I mean, the mind gets a bad rap these days. Yeah, and it's yeah. About, <laughs> yeah I know. It's about... Um, it, it being used in its correct way. Yes. Often because we're asleep, mm. fundamentally, mm -hmm. as we walk around this waking sleep, um, the mind is just allowed to run, you know, right and, and just uh, rule the roost. And it's not actually its job to do that. Yeah. But when it's just left to do that, then all the problems occur. And there are pr plenty of stories in the timeless wisdom traditions that actually guard against that. Um, but we just haven't been taught them. We haven't been shown what to do mm. so effectively. I mean, we, we had the, you know, the, all these different eras, you know, the era of machine and the, the era now of technology. Um, and before all of that, you know, the farmers listened to their cattle, you know, uh, yeah. they, they knew what was coming based on the reaction of the cattle. They knew how to read the stars in the sky. You know, they knew how to feel the weather. They were intuitively in tuned. And in a lot of ways, because of this a device here, the phone, or anything else, we kind of seem to have stepped back from that intuitiveness and allowed mm -hmm. technology to tell us everything. And that is not that's not the way to do it because we can't lose that intuitiveness, can we? We can't lose that tuned in. Um, well, you know, everyone's doing a good job trying to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because basically our consciousness and awareness is at the level of objects. Mm. That is our level of reality. What we call reality is at the level of, of form, name and form. Um, in Sanskrit, that's Nama Rupa. And, um, but the thing is, as we know, with only just a modicum of awareness where we actually just stop and fall still, you know, mm. we may see a beautiful sunrise and it, it stops us for a moment 
and we start to connect with something greater and it's automatic. And immediately we're taken out of that name and form and we just have an awareness of something yeah. greater. But for the most part, during the day, we're at the level of form. Um, and, and then our heads are guiding us or directing us or forcing us or pushing us around. Um, you know, and there's very little awareness of anything else. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's plenty in the wisdom traditions to uh, guide us out of that, but we need to know how. And it's utterly practical. It's the mm. only way actually to live effectively. Yeah, I agree with you. And um, when you say to people, be still, you know, they immediately get the itchies, you know, <laughs> you know I can't say still, you know, I, I need to go. And it, it's almost feels to them like a punishment, you know, yeah. and we, you know, the simplicity of life, slowing down, doing things kind of deliberately and paying attention to how you're doing things. In other words, slow mowing, you know, when yeah. you see something in slow motion, you take in the magnitude of the picture we've put ourselves you know foot to the pedal and destination 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 that we've forgotten it is the journey it is the wonderful twists and turns that you take along the way where the true enrichment of life is how do we slow people down in order to realize that well that that is something that needs to be taught you need to learn it. You, may, you need to make a decision. As an mm. adult, I think you need to recognise that um, what you're doing isn't quite working. Either it's completely not working, things are, are not right, or you just know you have greater potential and you don't yeah. know how to um, express that and realise that and fulfil that. If you're in either of those, uh, and I'm just taking two examples, there's obviously permutations within that, um, then you need to actually stop because it's like it, there's, no, there's no way of solving a problem at the level at which it was created. You need right. something new. Mm. So to stop is the first thing to do and then connect with who you are. Now, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. um, and that's what the wisdom traditions are telling us. Uh, and, and I find delving into the wisdom in Sanskrit automatically has that effect. Um, and once you start connecting with who you are, and that means getting out of the head, yes. getting out, because all this rushing around is an absolute, you know, blaring sign that we're being driven mm -hmm. forward by our mind, because that's the nature of the mind. Mm -hmm. If it's left without any proper guidance or um, reason to it, it just goes from this to this to this to this to this and it just weaves this web of loosely associated things and we're yeah. just sort of being pulled along like we've got a nose ring in yeah. our nose <laughs> yes i, yeah. I mean it's, it's, the, the faster and busier we are the mm. more the more fundamentally asleep and unaware we are true i um, you know and i just always took that as a, as a sort of a working hypothesis that if I felt really intensely busy, busy and the stress that goes with that, especially when I was teaching, I must be snoring my head off basically right. to, the, to the awareness that's around me. And, but then to stop, there's momentum that's built up in that. So you've actually got to stop. It takes discipline, mm -hmm. it takes practice, and it takes determination and will. Um, not impossible, of course. And then you discover what's, what you're really capable of. Mm. Um, but, th but that's applying wisdom to do that. Right. I mean, I like the, the topic conscious confidence. You know, what is confidence? You know, I, I'm, I think this is a question that gets thrown around a lot because a lot of people have a, a totally different opinion of what confidence is. And, <laughs> and you know, from, from my perspective, it is being at one with myself not yeah. fighting me all the time to be something else or to live up to somebody else's um, expectations, having confidence in myself to know what I can do on that uh, and what I will try to do, uh, but doing it from a conscious basis, in other words, from the heart and the soul's truth, uh, then I will know, you know, I can't go against my core. If somebody yeah. says, I want you to do this, this, my core will just push back and go, no, not for you. And yet I'm not going to argue with my core. Because I know if I'd argue with my core, I'm not going to win. <laughs> right? yeah. So yeah. for me, the confidence is, is in who you are and why you are and what you're here to do uh, on a conscious level, but also in a consciousness 
of love. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And, and uh, you know, a lot of the confidence that we, well, what we associate with confidence, it's at a level, it's, um, I, I call it unconscious confidence. Another way of describing it is conditional confidence mm -hmm. in that it's dependent on a certain sec set of circumstances being a particular way before you feel that you can do something right, or that you will try to do something um, that you feel comfortable. And as a result, we tend to stay within our comfort zones, mm -hmm. um, you know, because that's where we can function and it's comfortable. Being slightly uncomfortable um, is an indication that we're actually doing something new because by definition, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's new. If, if it's all completely known and we feel, uh, secure within that we become complacent not confident we become complacent <laughs> and we and we go to sleep yes because that is part of our nature mm -hmm. we just go to sleep we our awareness drops so we have to be um, you know if we're doing something <clears throat> excuse me new there's a certain edge to it but it doesn't mean we lack any fundamental confidence in ourselves we're just prepared to walk that path and meet the unexpected as we go and change direction or adjust course as we go so there's a certain um edge to it and you can you can call that sort of discomfort as in a way mm. it's not pain it's just the uncertainty of something new but it's exciting it's wonderful things are unfolding and we're confident in ourselves to be able to walk that path towards something new something that's of greater fulfillment and greater expression of ourselves which always uplifts everyone around us and uplifts ourselves so that's a, a, a benefit and a, and, a, and a wholly good thing to do but most of the time we like to stick with what's familiar, things that we've repeated. So there's habit involved there. And all of those things are just recipe for going to sleep, basically. Yeah. yeah. And staying within a limit. And, um, but this fundamental confidence in ourselves that we can handle things, that's what I'm interested in. Mm. Uh, because then we can evolve. Wonderment. Yeah. You know, if we, st we, we are natural born explorers. You know, all the explorers had were kind of in the backpack, so to speak, with the tools that they needed to survive on this journey of wonderment, exploration of what they were going to find. Every country that we have, it, somebody found, somebody discovered, and we all went to because it sounded good. <laughs> you know? yeah. But without somebody there exploring it, you know, and paving the way for us. Um, would we have left our homes? Would we have gone anywhere? Would we, would we have this united world here as we do today? We're not only through Zoom, flight when you can fly. We have that connection all around the world, which is wonderful. But if we didn't have those people that were filled with exploration and wonderment and what's around the corner, and they didn't do it by a manual, they didn't do it by numbers. They literally prepared themselves with what they needed and off they went. And I think that's what coaches and counselors and motivators and mentors do. You fill people's backpack with the tools they need in order yeah. just to go and take that step of exploration and wonderment of what's out there. And it is just so much more exhilarating, isn't it? To kind of do it that way than to do it the safe zone. You know, I'm going to be here then and then I'm going to be here then and here then. No, you're not going to get what you need out of it if that's the way you need, want to go. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, you just need to look at plants. They don't sort of grow to a plant. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they do, and they, they do and they don't. But, you know, every tree's got branches. They're not all absolutely stamped out. Each one is unique. And, and I think that's where, where unique expressions of this universal one consciousness and it's the really the journey and the excitement is is in giving expression to this consciousness and and the science of consciousness mm -hmm. the law of consciousness and you know whether you are a, a teacher a lawyer um you know a builder a mother a father it doesn't matter what you're doing there in a sense that's just a uh, context yes to make it all interesting but the fundamental that's the same in, in all the cases is that expression of our consciousness. Um, and that consciousness is one. I love the fact that you brought up the trees. Now let's take a forest. Every single tree has a different identity. 
yeah. even though sort of fallen over dead life comes from it the trees don't look at the other growing tree you're too fat you can't grow here <laughs> you know yeah you know it just they just don't pass that judgment instead and um, um judy dench did a wonderful documentary on trees and and they literally filmed the fiber optics of their matrix as it grows from the roots underground because they connect with each other they communicate and support one another throughout the entire forest there all the trees are one yeah. uh, in that connection and really that's what we're asking humans to be stand up in your own beautiful tree no matter yeah. your shape and size your economics your sexual preference it doesn't matter stand up in it because allow your your matrix to meet with the other trees and you will grow abundantly because they're not in comp competition with each other they're not in the greed i'm going to be taller than you and tower over everybody some trees are made that way and they're there to tell us what's going on there are navigators right yeah. but why can't we be like that as human beings and tap into our own matrix of consciousness with each other well I I think we can. But we why just... don't we? Maybe that's the question we should yeah, be yeah. asking. <laughs> well, well, number one, we need to be taught. We need to mm. be shown. Um, you know, we need guidance. But we have to want to. Right. We have to, we have to want that wisdom. Um, you know, there's a traditional story in the wisdom traditions in, in pretty much all the, the major wisdom traditions of a, of a student a person going to a teacher of wisdom saying i want to be taught i want to learn the great wisdom i want to uh, realize myself the truth of myself and the universe and the teacher takes them outside says follow me they go outside to a river and the teacher shoves the, the student's head under the water and holds it there until the student's gasping for breath for air and he pulls his head up and the student says what were you doing and he said, and the teacher says, when you want the wisdom as much as you wanted that breath, mm. then, I, then you're ready and I can teach you. Right. Right. And that's in a lot of the traditions, that story. And it just illustrates that you've got to want it. Um, yeah. And not, not and just it, because you want the knowledge. Yeah. You, you, want, you, you need to have it, mind, body and soul in order to be it, to be yeah. the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And often that means, you know, it, ourselves, we've got to have sufficient contrast that we've got to the sort of uh, point in what we're doing. We think this isn't working. Mm -hmm. um, either, you know, things are falling apart on the outside or it's just something's not quite right. You think this, this isn't working. This, this isn't for me anymore. Um, I, I need something more. And when we turn and start asking questions... Um, and real questions that are meaningful to us, then there's a shift. And, you know, the, the knowledge is always there waiting, but we've got to turn yeah. around and ask. And, and that's a very beautiful thing and a very individual thing. You know, what do they say? The teacher will be there when the student is ready. Student is ready. Right. Yeah. But, you know, I find, you know, from all the shows that I've done, the people that are ready to go through the process to step into their meaningful purpose and then be of service to one another are the people that have had more than the nudge, nudge, wink, wink. They've had the cosmic two by four. And, it, <laughs> you know, and it's like completely flattened. Everything that they had and did and everything has gone. And now, like a phoenix, they rise from the ashes in their truth. And every single one of them said, despite what happened, and believe me, some of them have gone through some horrific things. It's just like mm -hmm. how you can still function, I don't know. Because if anybody wanted to check out after what happened to you, I would understand. But instead, they went through the process. And now they're there to be that beacon of hope for other people. But they said, every one of them has said, I wouldn't change anything. Because who I am today, where I am today, what I'm doing today, wipes out any of the pain i've ever had but, but it's yeah. but all of that pain has made me who i am today yes. so we've got to be willing to go through that haven't we yes and and it, you know that story of the teacher holding the student's head under the water mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know it's that level of desire yeah um that is and it's it, it's a will and it's a desire and frankly those that needs to be strengthened and nurtured uh, it's not just like bump and it's there right um, you know anyone who's no decided, downloadable app 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, to actually do the work, you know, if you wanted to say run a, a, an Olympic marathon, you just had that desire. You think, right, that's me. That's what I want to do. You're, you're not just going to, you know, go and put your running gear on, fill in the forms and form, and the Olympic <laughs> management says you're in, you know, and you start running the marathon, ready, set, go. It's not like a school sports carnival or anything. Right. Um, you know, you've got to train and you've got to really, really want it no matter what. Right. You know, and that you just take the Olympic athletes. That is one of the uh, defining characteristics, no matter what their discipline or sport is, they want this more than anything. Yeah. Right. And, and they will do the work. They're focused and their fulfillment at that time is in that particular discipline at that level yeah. and it's the same thing we've got to reach the point where we have that discipline and that desire and that focus um like the student wanting the breath um mm. and you can't force that on yourself yeah. it it grows and you either have it sort of in a sense the circumstances really draw that desire up as in the people you were talking about, or it, it grows and it needs strengthening no matter what you're doing. Um, right. And, and that just, you know, that's a patience and a time to pursue this. Um, and, and over time, you've got to see that what you were doing just no longer works for you. You know, it's just. Yeah. And, you know, going back to the Olympian thing, it's not about the only important people are the, the bronze, silver and, and gold medalist. It's yeah. did you beat your time? Did you, put your excellence out there today. And if you did, and you did even better than last time, you're a winner. You yeah. are a winner. And we're inclined as humanity to only look at the people in the, the top three meddling. And exactly. we don't look at everything else that someone has gone through and they're deemed as losers. No, everybody's a winner. Just some people excelled. It was their time. It was their time for the gold. It was their time yeah. for the silver or bronze. And I think one of the things we've got to stop doing is measuring ourselves against each other, you know, the competitiveness. Um, yeah. And the, I want to be like that person. No, be you. Be more of yeah. you. Be abundantly you. You, know, yeah. you can um, be inspired by someone, by what they've said, the path that, that they've done. You can be inspired to take your journey based on that. But it's still your journey. Yeah. Your signature, not somebody else. You can't repeat somebody else's. Yeah. And that's where the conscious confidence comes yeah. in. You know, you, you need that fundamental confidence in yourself. And it is a fundamental confidence, no matter what, um, that you can draw on resources within yourself. Uh, and then what you need is provided and you will keep going and be the best that you can be, the best version of yourself, give full expression to yourself in everything that you do, be it making a cup of tea, mm -hmm. weeding the garden, looking after a child, doing whatever you need to do in the, in the simple practical things of life and in the, in the wonderful projects that you may take on. All of it is infused with the best of yourself um, you know, if you really saw yourself as a universal, infinite being, you know, you would make every cup of tea for yourself in the most beautiful way and in using the best cup you had available. Even if it had a chip, you'd make sure it was clean. You know, you, you would offer the best because you understood yourself as being a universal being. Um, yeah. But all too often, we just see ourselves as a, you know, a, a limited uh body with you know psychology that doesn't work most right, of the time right you know? yes i mean a, a human burden many of the time you know I, yeah you know i know for me I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a spiritual being and i had a hell of a hard time living as a human being and it took a long time before i could merge the two together and understand the gift um yeah. you know partly because the vibration of humans on their own is quite deafening and 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 so utterly disconnected that you could really feel it. But it, when you are stepping into that oneness, that sense of peace, that sense of, you know, conscious confidence that you're in, it's, yeah. there's no need to apologize. There's no need to, to bend yourself into a pretzel for someone. You are who you are and you're good enough for you. And if somebody yeah. else likes you for that, then that's fine. It's not a competition. And I think that's yeah. really important. Yeah. Why the Sanskrit for you? What, what was it that drew, 
drew you to that? And, and what was the epiphany for you to realize that this was it for you? Um, there's a lot, a lot of questions, great questions there. Um, why the Sanskrit? Well, easy answer to that is that's what I was, it's the way I was taught. Mm -hmm. Um, so from a young age, uh, I was just shown this way mm -hmm. and it just, it, I just loved it. It just made so much sense. It was so intelligent. Um, and then uh, as I got older and I began to see, you, you know, the wisdom that, I referred to within myself that I'd been taught. And then I'd say, why are people doing that? You know, I couldn't understand. Yeah. <laughs> why would you do that? And then that, that's where, you know, it's a process of growing up, realizing that that's what, that's the knowledge that those people have had. Yeah. And, and I think, Oh, I see that produces this result. Right. Whereas <laughs> what I've been shown gives you the clarity to do this. You know, that, you know, I'm a human being like everyone else as right. well. But, um, so that was, you know, that's sort of a simple way of looking at it. Um, um, but, but, you know, what a gift for, to actually yeah. be taught it as a child and not to have to have the cosmic two by four to waken up to it later. I mean, that in itself is a every, gift. Every day, every yeah. day I'm grateful, mm -hmm. every day. Um, and as I've gone on the Sanskrit more and more, there, there's fundamentals in looking at language and, and Sanskrit can be understood at different levels. Mm -hmm. um, the word Sanskrita, which is the Sanskrit word for Sanskrit, Sanskrit, the way we're saying Sanskrit is really the Hindi pronunciation, takes the vowel off the end. But Sanskrita means pure and perfectly formed. Mm. That's what the word actually means. The wisdom in Sanskrit, the vibration, the energy in Sanskrit is pure and perfectly formed. It's unchanged. That's important because it hasn't been um, diluted, corrupted, altered, mm -hmm. right? It is intact. That's important. Um, so think about when we fall still and you talked about that prompting of the, the mind and the heart, right? The soul. When we fall still and we, we connect with that, that inner voice, that still small voice, that knowledge, that's almost before it's translated into language that we understand, if it's English or whatever language you speak, that's our vernacular um, that we use normally. That, that connection, that knowledge, that wholeness in that moment, that essence of wisdom and essence of knowledge is always pure and perfectly formed, isn't it? Yes. It never takes us in the wrong direction, ever. It's pure and perfectly formed. So that is one way of understanding Sanskrit, right? It has no that agenda, does it? None. Right. It, is, it, is, it, it is called the, the language of the universe. Mm -hmm. um, but then the actual language as we know it with dictionaries and behind me, there's multiple dictionaries and grammar <laughs> books and all things Sanskrit. Um, and, and they're all available. And, and the Sanskrit language itself is magnificent and, you, you know, so vast. The grammatical system, the vibration of mm. the sounds, everything is yes. incredible. Um, and of course, we're speaking English and English is a cognate of Sanskrit, Latin, Greek, they're all mm. connected with Sanskrit. So it is a direct um, relation um, and Sanskrit is often called a mother of Sanskrit. Some people say the mother of, uh, the mother of English. I, I say a mother of English. I use a, an a rather than a the mm. Because, you know, there is some debate amongst linguists about that. But English is directly related to Sanskrit in so many ways. So we're, we've been speaking English, but actually the roots of a lot of our words yeah. have come from Sanskrit. So Sanskrit's not just some ancient language that's irrelevant. So that's another reason to get back to the actual roots of things. You know, people like to know where their foods come from. And they're sort of fussy to eat an organic this and, a mm -hmm. you know, which farmer's produced that well what about the language that we're speaking because language is far more fundament fundamental than the physical food that we eat um, the very language that we speak is a reflection of the thoughts that we think and the feelings yeah. that we feel as a result do we know where all of that has come from what are we choosing to think 
and therefore to feel. And that yeah. then affects the, the, the actions that we take. So there are, there's so many fundamentals. And to get back to the actual wisdom that guides us and tells us how to give full expression as a human being in our magnificence to our limitlessness and our universality, it's all in the Sanskrit. And I was taught to look into the actual meaning of the words, into the um, etymology and in there, Sanskrit actually gives you the meaning through experience mm -hmm. because Sanskrit is based on verbal roots rather than noun roots, nominal roots. And that is a fundamental change, um, you know, to have something based on verbs rather than nouns, objects, is incredible because that's the very energy of meaning. Right. So, so in doing something, in the act of something, you'll find the very essence of the meaning. So it's in, the meaning is in the experience, in the doing. And that's incredible. That is a game changer, actually, if you apply your mind to that concept, um, because that's how we connect up all the parts of ourselves. Um, so, you know, there's so many things I could say about Sanskrit, but, um, you know, I had been taught this and I studied it. That's what I studied at university. i I've taught it to children, to adults, um, apart from other things. I've done a lot of that sort of thing. Um, and I would know where class myself as sort of an expert. You know, I, I know people who are far more expert in Sanskrit than me. It's, it's a lifetime study. But You're learned on it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But it's the, the essence of the wisdom that's contained. In, in simple words, it's revelatory and it gets you thinking more deeply, more broadly. And as soon as you start doing that, it has literally changed your life. If you can think differently for a moment, yeah. your life has changed in that moment. You're shifting, um, shifting your perspectives. Sh mm. Exactly. And when I started, you know, because I got interested in the whole concept of confidence mm -hmm. um, because I happened to be, believe, believe it or not, at a harp workshop because I started learning the harp because that's something I'd always wanted to do. And my harp teacher ran this workshop for a weekend and she had, um, she had a psychologist come and talk about performance anxiety. And there's this room full of harpists, some professional concert harpists and other people like me, students. And he was talking about um, the issues with performance anxiety. Mm -hmm. And um, the harpists were all talking about, oh, yeah, you know, and, and of course you, you get prescribed beta blockers and you take medication and... And like, I'm sitting there literally with my jaw on the floor thinking, what, you know, this was, and this was just a practical way of this is, and unfortunately, yeah. it, you know, the effects of the beta blockers, but it's got you through the performance. And the more I thought, I had, behind me, I had no idea. So I started looking into this and I thought, what, you know, one thing led to another after a I knew a bit about neuroscience, but I sort of went back and looked in more detail, did a lot of research for months. And then I thought, okay, what is happening? This was the question I asked myself. What is happening when we are confident? What's actually happening? Um, and as soon as I asked that word, it just, that question, it was just go and look at the Sanskrit. That was mm. the knowledge immediately. And it didn't come from up here. Yeah. It, yep. it, it was I'm always saying, feel your knowledge, feel your knowledge. Then you'll understand yep. what the knowledge is. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And it was go and look at the Sanskrit. So I got out all my dictionaries and I looked up Sanskrit. Uh, I looked up confidence and I found that there were 12 words or a dozen words, all meaning confidence in different forms. So fast forward about five months worth of research and I suddenly thought, right, what have I got here? Because I had vast amounts of information. <coughs> and, um, and then I, I got my husband, I, I laid it all out in the dining room table. I said, honey, what am I looking? There's something here. What am I looking at? And he said, let's start grouping them. And I started grouping them. And it all of a sudden, there mm -hmm. was like these core energies and in, in the mm -hmm. book that's where I saw the fourfold energy of conscious confidence. And right. I thought, what is this called? And as soon as I asked the question within about two minutes, conscious confidence presented to me. And that was how the name came, everything. And it was literally revealed to me. Yes. As I started following this. 
that that's the way reveal always goes isn't it when we step out of ourselves it it will come and basically you know you had gathered lots of instruments of information and by putting it together you'd created the orchestra right so and that's that's the thing is that what are we looking for in life in confidence it's that self-assuredness it's that we will be we all want to be accepted we all want to be heard that is a human condition and if we can put ourselves together in a confident way where we can step into who we are we're enough my instrument is enough i'm enough to join this orchestra and yeah. that confidence precedes you. And it's not arrogance. A lot of people think confidence is arrogance. You know, I would say the importance of you is, is placing importance on your well-beingness. Self-importance yeah. is somebody who is, thinks they're more important than anyone else. And generally looks down on people to make themselves feel bigger. But that, yeah. uh, that importance of self and, and looking after your well-being and being the most that you can be, every time you play your instrument, you are vibrating that confidence, that love, that self-assuredness, that meaning for purpose out to everyone else. And yeah. those that are ready to pick it up will pick it up. It's like yeah. not everybody hears the orchestra, do they? Or they all hear it in a yeah. different way on different levels of consciousness. Yeah. So I love the way it came about. Um, and, you know, uh, it, it is quite sad that people they are probably i mean musicians alone i love interviewing musicians because they're already in their meaningful purpose they're already yeah. in their love they're already in their conviction they you couldn't take music away from them you couldn't say to them go do something else they might do something on the sideline to bread and butter but music is their heart and soul at their purpose right so when you're interviewing them that ooze is you're oozing out that love of what they do so why is it when they get actually out in performing in front of people, they lose the confidence? So, <laughs> you know, it's like, just step into your love, yeah. the love of what you do, and that love will exuberate out to everyone else, right? So yeah. where does this lack of confidence come from? Is it the expectations that we put upon each other as human beings? Well, I think there's different aspects to that. Um, just the performance the nature of performance, I think there's, um, it comes from a desire to give your best. So I think mm. fundamentally it comes from a, um, a love and honor and respect for the audience and to, and to give your best as a service. I, I think that's the fundamental motivation. Obviously you no one walks out wanting to just go, meh, you know, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Every, it's, it's a natural thing to want to give the best. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and then there's that, it, it, that very quickly tips over into an e- eager to please and, mm. um, and then, uh, you know, can I do this and all of those things. And it, it's a, the shift is, you know, it, it's infinitesimal but then the ramifications of that are vast. Yeah. So you still, despite wanting to, um, uh, in it, well, in addition to wanting to sort of give your best, obviously out of respect and love for the audience, um, is maintaining a fundamental connection within yourself. Um, and that it, that's where, everything in life goes wrong. Like the, you described confidence is often seen as this sort of egotistical brash mm-hmm. thing. And I describe that in my book as, as a form of unconscious confidence mm-hmm. because it's very much conditional and yeah. we know it doesn't take, you only need to be a little bit older in, uh, in your life journey to know that those people that um, that bubble can be popped very mm-hmm. easily by, mm-hmm. <coughs> by a, a shift in circumstances. So um, in that regard, it's an unconscious form of confidence. It's yeah. conditional. This is a fundamental confidence that you're happy being um, speaking, if that's what's called of you, mm-hmm. and also being silent and, and invisible. It doesn't, you know, so-called invisible, no one notices that you're there. It doesn't matter because you're within yourself, you're in your own presence. Um, and you, you, you need that fundamental connection uh, with yourself and... Um, and it doesn't mean you won't feel nerves sometimes. Right, you yes. Just, you just move through those. They're just passing conditions rather than a fundamental indication of who you are. 
I think a lot of it, especially if you're doing anything in public, is you are an, you're going out with a particular energy and you don't know if the audience is in that energy. Yeah. Uh, I know when I'm doing a, a speaking engagement, I always have everybody stand up and do three deep breaths and yeah. then turn around and say hello to each other because I want people to get onto the same energy flow and yeah. you know, a musician will go out and, and hit them with a number that he knows that they're all ready for to get them into that <laughs> to get them into, into that yeah That's because yeah. i mean what what is quantum spirituality but quantum energy and what yeah. we are entirely made up of energy the universe everything is and what we're asking people to do is to step into a higher frequency a yeah. higher vibration and the yeah. higher that you're willing to go into that multi-dimensional vibration the more you actually understand what the sanskrit's teachings are exactly. not only understand them but how to apply them and yeah. going back to what i said in the beginning the more you understand the more you understand the responsibility and um, and duty in a sense to it but it's it's understanding that you will get more done in a more simple and slower way than you will in a loud profound fast way so yeah. it's it's as i said it's kind of when you watch the matrix and he's dodging the bullets all in slow-mo is that sometimes we need to take ourselves into slow-mo in order to really see the entire picture around us and yeah. i think uh, quantum spirituality and turning up our vibration is not becoming more high-pitched <laughs> you know it's it's about everything getting into a beautiful rhythm a yeah. wonderful flow of life, a, a continuum. It's not about yeah. the high pitch or the low pitch. It's the rhythm of, of it, isn't it? Riding yeah. that energy of understanding. Yeah, and that is available to us in the present moment. Yes. Um, not, not a sort of hyper-present, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it, it is connected uh, in the moment. And, uh, and then simply we need to get out of our head yeah. um, so that the mind can do its job properly and um and it can be directed properly but definitely that that connection and things do seem to slow down there seems to be more time more space what needs to be done is done and completed um more clarity and, and more clarity but going back to some fundamental uh understandings of some key things say just around confidence some key concepts around confidence that power of understanding is not just mental concepts. And right. that's the thing with Sanskrit. Um, and, and the people that have, uh, whom I know that have read the book have said to me, I find when I read, it just takes me deeper. Right. Uh, you know, and, and uh, the book's got stories in it and, and a bit of the Sanskrit and all of that, but it's not sort of intellectual in that way. Mm. And yet it takes you deeper and you just need a little bit of depth and connection and just sort of, take a moment a reflection then, right a reflection of yeah. self as they as they read it they relate it reflects who they yeah. are and so they go deeper into a, le a level of themselves that they never knew was there yeah and and that was one thing i was taught that um if you're going to do something and and part of looking into the etymology we were taught to do this so that uh if we were going to uh contemplate a passage in the upanishads or something from the win wisdom traditions we were going, we needed to make sure we had the meaning there as well, not just be hooked on the sounds themselves, right. but actually have the meaning so that the whole body, the, the whole mm -hmm. person, <clears throat> the mind and the heart was connected so that the meaning was there in what we were considering. Um, but that's an interesting point because if you have limited understanding and limited mm. meanings, then you're just reinforcing that by contemplating those limited understandings. So going back to the Sanskrit opened up your mind yeah. and showed you where you had limits in mm -hmm. your thinking, which you did, you were unconscious of. So it was raising your awareness. That was one reason for studying Sanskrit. And I found that just so intelligent. I found it revelatory. You mm -hmm. could look up... A simple word like, um, and it's in the book, but it stays with me to this day. This is years ago. I looked up the word all, A-double-L -L in English, right? All, we think all. Okay, great. I know what that means. In Sanskrit, in, uh, in Sarava, um, it's, con it's common. It's, it's all, it, all through the, the texts. <clears throat> and I'd looked it up tons of times. And I thought, oh, here we go. I've got to look it up. I, I won't bother. I know what that means. But... 
I thought, no, the discipline is to look up each word. So I addressed myself to looking up this word as if for the first time. And it was an absolute revelation to me because there are a lot of meanings. And as I read through them with attention, I suddenly, it was like peeling back all these limits I had around the word all, A double L. And what I realized was my fundamental understanding of that meaning meant a lot. Mm. All meant a lot. It, in essence, that's how I acted in terms of my meaning of all. It meant a lot. But Sanskrit saying all means all. It's everything from right. the micro to the macro. It's right. All Everything. of it. Yes. <laughs> all of it. Yeah. You know, how, how can you actually infuse that A double L, those three letters? <laughs> yeah. And, and one of the letters is repeated mm -hmm. um, with, with the absolute energy of what sounds. In that moment, I thought, you know, literally, oh my God, you know, ah, oh, this was, and this was just one example of the power of Sanskrit. We, um, we, we don't understand, you know, we think words, they're just there to put a sentence together to, to speak what we want to speak about. But we don't realize yeah. that, that those words, each one of them has their own energy signature yeah. and, and how you use them in the way that you use them, in the tone that you use them in will change the vibrations to therefore change the meaning. So yeah. we, we need to be conscious. Uh, we, we get lazy with words that we hear repeated around us all the time. And we're inclined to just use that word to, okay. to narrow down a sentence where if we wish to clarify, sometimes we do need more than one or two words uh, yeah. to encompass it and, and to, again, bring about the whole of that energy in that sentence rather than just fragments of it. So yes. being mindful of words and the energy around the words, the tone in which we use those words, um, the intent behind the words is, is really something we need to be conscious about. Yes, yes. And, and understanding, that comes back to understanding the power of language, mm -hmm. what language is. Um, and, it, you know, it's described in the wisdom traditions that language is a fire. It is a form of fire. It's an energy of fire. And it acts like fire in that it can um, illuminate, it can warm and light, but it can also burn and destroy. Mm. Um, and so language has to be used with great care yes. and great reason um, because we know the effect you can uplift someone or you can destroy them uh, with a word or the intent behind the word so you know uh, when i was teaching that was something i uh, we spent time actually trying to pass on to children the power of words and yeah the choice of words is very important and the way that you say them you know understanding that the tone yeah. um yeah. the force behind it you yeah. know um yeah. the we've got very very sarcastic as human beings and we use uh words in a very sarcastic way which can be very demeaning to people well i'm just being sarcastic no you're being demeaning and using sarcasm as a way yeah. to deliver it um and I think a lot of us, a lot of people have become very bitter and twisted. You know, it's like they look at everything that's going on in the world and they think, oh, why bother? But what they're not seeing and what they're not hearing is the beautiful current that is sweeping across the consciousness of this world, you know, rising up into a higher consciousness that will tilt the the equilibrium at some point which i think is now beginning very much to do so and the more we become like the forest with the collective consciousness despite what our tree looks like you know yeah. we the more we're going to understand that togetherness and that uh, the confidence of of, con of consciousness is to step into yourself and be a part of something with your own instrument yes. so we'll get more done that way won't we definitely and and coming back to the wisdom traditions um, which help you navigate the shift in uh, conscious consciousness that, that that does occur. It's it's you know it's it's not like it's it hasn't happened before, um, and to approach it with love yeah. and respect and dignity, so that you um, uplift someone who 
anyone that you meet, or even though it can be a passing meeting, that they are uplifted and they're met with a smile and they're met with love and they're met with care and respect. Um, that actually takes discipline and strength. Yes. Uh, it's, not, it's not weakness. It, it takes a, a greater discipline and strength. And all of that, um, that energy and knowledge is in the Sanskrit. It, it shows you what to do. It tells you what to do. That's what's so incredible about it. Yeah. Um, it's you know, the guidance. Was, it's the wisdom that we need. You know, that's the thing yeah. is there is always an answer out there. Or ways yeah. well, <laughs> there are many point. ways <laughs> right and it's yeah. it's up to us to be receptive to step out of our insecurity uh to be vulnerable you know yeah. to to be willing to learn you know um i'm always saying the art of knowingness is listening to, to your soul's wisdom that gives it to your heart and resonance and allows your spirit to step into action which will allow your mind to know what it needs to know when it needs to know it and it's like don't be afraid of your knowingness. When something, I know this, and somebody says, well, how do you know? Prove how you know it. Where do you know it from? It, it, forget yeah. about what they're saying. You feel that knowledge. You know it. Yeah. Trust that knowledge. Even if you don't understand why you know it in that moment, it will be revealed. But don't let somebody else talk you out of your knowingness. Yeah, and I, I think that the uh, sarcasm is an indication of, of a fundamental trust that's been broken yes. within someone um, and that trust needs to be rebuilt and no one can do that but for the person. a person they mm. have to do it themselves and so when you hear that sarcasm or whatever there is almost a compassion that 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 trust has been broken within themselves and there's a gratitude um that you're in a position where you know you may not necessarily feel that um because you've been shown a um a way that means that that trust is there within yourself. Um, it must mean the whole of the British Empire must be like that because they use sarcasm a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, having, having, having a bit of a laugh about yourself. I oh, mean, yeah. yeah. Certainly, I, as you can tell from my accent, I'm in Australia. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're fun. Uh, Aussies take are the mickey out of yourself, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, you can... You can just take it all so seriously. And that's yes. in the wisdom traditions. It's all meant to be ultimately for fun. Yes. <laughs> well, there has to be some jubilance, you know, understanding exactly. it's not just about being, you know, calm and quiet and at one. It's, it's about being self-confident in that oneness to be as goofy as you want. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, that, and that takes confidence to just yeah. you know, ham it up like that and yeah. just be ridiculous. Yes, you know? exactly. And, uh, yeah. and, and not, don't worry about other people's judgment. They're going to yeah. judge from the place they're at. But you yeah. don't know how many people you're going to uplift, yeah. right? Just by being silly billies, by doing something funny or crazy or something kind. You know, the ripple yeah. effect that that all has. And if you've got one sour grape there, just don't let the sour grape don't affect your day, it. right? That's, yeah. That is their issue. It's not yours. <laughs> yeah. And that, that, and from conscious confidence, it doesn't, you know, in the end, you just don't even worry about no, whether someone's don't even notice. Them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. <Whatever. laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I know I'm weird prerequisite to living here you know that's that's <laughs> per, the only way i could survive earth is to be weird you know so that's okay <laughs> ah great i mean the, i think this is you know, we need to take life seriously and understand our role in it our meaningful purpose our instrument etc we need to take things seriously on how we use our words the frequency and the vibration the meaning behind it and the intent behind it but at the same time we've got to stop and smell the roses you know, listen to the rustle of the leaves, you know, watch the puppies and the children play, find that smile, find that joy, find yeah. that love that is all around you and yeah. be a part of that love and let that love be a part of you. And we will find our own exuberance as we go, if we're willing to walk and take the journey. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. <laughs> How do we get the book? How do people book you? And uh, whether it's not at six o'clock in the morning, but, <laughs> but how do people find you, love? Um, you can go to my website. That's consciousconfidence.com, consciousconfidence.com. And there's links to purchase my book. It's available on, on Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, or where you buy books. Uh, 
it's all available. It's in paperback, uh, ebook, uh, so you can read it on your Kindle, and there's also an audio book as well, so um, and, which I've narrated. So there's th three formats. So consciousconfidence.com. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. So if you go to Conscious Confidence Sarah Main, it's spelled S A R A H. I've got the H on the end. Mm -hmm. Main M A N E. Um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram as well, uh, and yeah, enjoy the book and and send me a, a message or mm. uh, drop me a line or post a question on social media because I'd love to have your questions and comments, what you find about the book. I, I re really would love to hear. Yes. I mean, Thank that's you. the thing is you're sparking, you know, um, an interest in people, you know, uh, and opening up some doors in there that they didn't even know there was a handle to. And, <laughs> you know, it's, it's as they, sometimes they may open up and their consciousness knows what it means but the head doesn't yet and yeah. sometimes you just need somebody to articulate what it is you're feeling yeah. and that comes from somebody that not only wrote the book but from people whose journey before you yeah. and you know and, it, and, no, nothing's too stupid right no not at all anything ask anything yeah like one one woman asked me i, I won't use the actual words she said she said okay like this was a single mother of three teenagers, right? So not, not an easy situation. No. And she said, okay. She said, how is Sanskrit going to help me when my life is turning pear-shaped? Now, I'm just taking out some of the mm -hmm. language. <laughs> uh, make it a bit more family friendly. <laughs> and that, what, what a great question. I thought this is a gift. Yes. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, it is utterly practical and the, the book it sounds like it's going to be academic there are sanskrit definitions lots of examples lots of analogies stories that I've put traditional teaching stories in because you you need those because the message then is um easily available to us there's contemporary accounts of people people i actually know and have worked with mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and children i've worked with illustrating the point i'm making and there's easy practices there's uh, all sorts of levels of practice things you can do in your life to experience this so the book is a sort of a manual as well of uh things you can do to actually experience this and take it from what seems like theory into actual experience and transformation is there waiting for you it's waiting for all of us and you know, not only has it been patiently waiting for a very very long time we really do need to put our foot to the pedal here and step up because you know as yeah. i say the universe is is shaking us up to wake us up for us to step up and change it up because we know we cannot as a human race go on the way we've been going on and this mm -hmm. is the invitation right now the knowledge is at your fingertips so click away yeah. um yeah. audio away a read away um yeah. and the thing is nobody can make the excuse saying i don't know all you have to do is explore. It's there for you. And you'll find the one that fits for you, where you, you can hear the language. You know they're speaking with you um, yeah. and not at you, so to speak. So it's the due diligence and the responsibility of our own awakening does lie with us. We have to make that choice to say, I am going to step up. I am going to awaken. I don't know how, I don't know where, but I'm going to explore what my options are. And exactly. I'm going to come across this book and I'm going to come across that mentor and I'm going to come across this along the way. And each one of them is an ingredient in your awakening. And then further you go down it and you look back to your past and go, phew, thank God I'm out of there. <laughs> right? Because it's yeah. so much better on the other side of that exactly. bridge. Yeah. Do you want to hear a bit of Sanskrit? Yes, <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. Okay. Uh, this is one of my favourite prayers and uh, invocations, and it's a traditional prayer, and I've taught it to children when I was teaching them. It's, it's really a prayer for all. Mm -hmm. Sarve bhavantu sukhina, sarve santu niramaya, Sarve bhadrani pashantu ma kashchidu kabhag bhavet. And that means may all be happy, may all be without disease, may we all only see what is uplifting, and none be in misery of any sort. Beautiful, lovely way to end the show. And you know, one can read it just the words, but when you sing it, 
along with the you know the musical tone with it it just like snowflakes just penetrates you know it's beautiful yeah. lovely way to end the show thank you so much love thank you and thank you for coming out so early in the morning <laughs> <laughs> i hope you can go back to bed now <laughs> I'm going to the gym. I'm oh, going to my bravo, gym. bravo. Well, I hope you're stimulated enough to do it. But thank you for sharing. You know, it's, um, thank you. I love the conscious confidence. It's confident mm -hmm. enough to step into your consciousness, uh, your awakening, your learning, your beingness, and discovery of your own meaningful purpose, and to understand we are part of the collective, even in our own individuality. So thank you so much for writing that book and for sharing it with us here today. And to remember folks, you know, it's up to you. It's right here. The book is there. It's what's being guided to be written. You can listen to it in audio, in ebook, in a uh, paperback book. Just take it and, and listen to it, read it, absorb it, and then let it guide you on your way. Because standing at the, at the starting line and not even taking the first step forward is not going to get you anywhere. So let's just put that one first foot forward and see where you can go and let Sarah's book guide you. Okay. Until next time, folks. Bye for now. We hope you enjoyed the show. We look forward to bringing you more shows. Please go to selfdiscoverymedia.com slash shows and you will see the incredible lineup of genres and shows that we have for you. We are here to make a difference in your life. Thank you for listening.